Back in 1993, I was uh, looking for a Wiesenborn style guitar, and they were extremely hard to find. And um, expensive. Expensive too. And uh, so I was in a band with a dude that told me that he knew somebody I knew, building him a guitar. And I said, "What was his name?" And he said, "John Reuter." And I went, "What?" Because I had gone to grade school with John Reuter, and we had kind of lost track of each other after high school. And uh, yeah, so I immediately went down, and we got reacquainted. And I asked him if he could build me a Wiesenborn style guitar. And he said, "Yeah, but there weren't much. There wasn't much information out there on it." So I had, I know that there was one for sale in Groon Guitars. So they sent me a couple of pictures. Uh, front and back, they wouldn't send the sides, and uh, so we had a front back picture. You had the scale length, you knew what the scale length was supposed to be, and then we had a video of uh, Ben Harper playing with Taj Mahal when he was really young, playing one, mm -hmm. and that's how we got the side profile of it. My sister was a photographer, and she had a that thing where you project it overhead on, projector, yeah, an overhead projector. So we took the scale length and put it on a piece of big piece of paper and taped it to the wall at my sister's house and then projected one of those photos that I got from Groom on the wall and we backed it up until the scale length fit and we traced it and that's how we got the shape. Then he put his mastery to work and figured out how to do the end block because this is hollow up to here. Uh, figured out how to do the end block and how to do the bracing and all of it. You kept insisting on mahogany, and I kept insisting koa, and you kept insisting mahogany. Yeah. And so. Because mahogany sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. And koa looks pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I won with the awesome sound. So so <laughs> but it's. It, but it still looks really pretty. <laughs> it's Honduran mahogany, and all of the accents are Nicaraguan rosewood that John Roberts brought up from Nicaragua and the late 60s. Are they typically hollow all the way up to yes. the neck? Yeah, this style is, yes. Uh -huh. So John figured out how to build a, a like a, a headstock block, neck block. Like Basically that. the neck block and the headstock are one piece and yep. then I just chiseled for the, the sides and the top and the back to insert yep. into the tube of wood. Yeah. It worked beautifully. You got to remember those were made in the what twenties and thirties. Twenties, yeah. So they, if you find one, um, they're usually pretty beat. They're usually pretty uh, worn out. And some people have restored them, and they make, they sound pretty good and stuff. This has been the guitar that anytime I bring to a session, anytime I bring to a stage. When anybody hears it, they're like, what the hell is that? And then I get to explain it to my friend here. Yeah, it just sounds 
really evenly beautiful all the way across. Really, uh, I can always hear all the notes. Um, I don't know. I've been thinking about trying some flat ones. I don't know. Won't. It probably won't be as bright. Yeah. It'll take away a lot. It'll, it'll be, uh, be less noisy. Yeah, yeah. So, six to one. I haven't tried it yet. I know you had to kind of finagle this through pictures and putting it up on the screen to get the thickness and everything. What about any type of bracing or anything inside? Well, I, I just found some pictures of the bracing in it today, um, but it's, it's an X-brace. Um, and, you know, it was just my best guess how to how to brace it so that it would be sturdy enough to withstand the tension and, and uh, you know I'd never built a guitar with a hardwood top before I had no idea about the uh, hollow neck thing it was you know just I took a stab at it and got lucky apparently so uh, I still curse at him because I should have made two so I have one <laughs> my website I put up all the records I've released and it's like 95 I'm not I've released that have been released that I've played them and I'm on a bunch of those and then I've played this on a bunch of things that have never seen the light of day I mean, right. so um, yeah it'd have to be quite a few well when I first the first time I heard one was Lindley in a crappy little bar in Tempe uh, and uh, I was just floored by the timbre and the tone and the the richness in the that and that and the sunrise pickup are magic at the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. John got me a feedback buster for this, and I use it for a long time, but I haven't. It's in my case, but I haven't used it in a long time, and I haven't had a problem. Uh, I think sound reinforcement has come such a long way, um, on stage and off. You know, I mean, I, if I'm on stage, I usually use an amp. Yeah. But you think it'd feed back, but it doesn't. I was cleaning out my closet and I came to watch a bunch of pictures of John when he was making this. It was an uh, acoustic guitar from 1996. It sounded great right out of the gate. Also, it's a, uh, it's a, the finish is oil. Oil finish. It's an oil finish. I wanted an oil finish and I wanted mahogany. Um, but uh, it has, Bring it in. Shame on you. I need to bring it into the shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was looking through all that stuff and found that. Uh, found it. I was, and so I called up you, John, and said, "Hey, man, I got this stuff. And these old pictures. Why don't we do a little, short little documentary on the, the making of the one and only." Yeah, hopefully, one of these days, I will have time to corral this instrument long enough to replicate it and hopefully uh, whatever comes next lives up to it. You think that one will be made out of koa or will you go back to the mahogany? I'm probably going to have to do it in mahogany. <laughs> yes! I still have that chunk of mahogany. Oh, yeah, you wow. still do. Huh? Yeah. It's just all beautiful. Yeah. It's all about love, baby. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha